everybody and welcome to another exciting installment of Wrestling Rampage. The two amigos are back in this bitch. That's right guys, we are back uh, with this edition of Wrestling Rampage. And Tommy, it's been a long time since we've been in depth with the wrestler. Yes. Talk about their career. Well, today we're going to be talking about the life and career of Mike Awesome. Mike Awesome. Uh, now, this has been a request by Awesome4K. Go check out his channel. Go watch The Best of Tommy Volume 4. Go watch The Best of Tom, uh, the Best of Pops Volume 2. And also, uh, The Best of Wrestling Rampage yes. itself. You guys can go watch those. Uh, the, the Best of Wrestling Rampage debuts tomorrow, Saturday. Yep. Um, exclusively on the Awesome4K YouTube channel. So go check that out. Yeah, go check out that. Also, 4K does great work. So, uh, first and foremost, Mike Awesome uh, was trained by Steve Kern. Uh, Skinner. Skinner. Probably yeah. the only one that was good enough. Uh, the Alligator Man. Well, right. well, see, Mike Awesome's good. Skinner ain't. Um, you know, fabulous ones. Well, you know, well, of that nature, well, but, well, uh, well, the only reason he was so good is because of Stan Lane. Well... We also need to talk about, you know, I mean... I'm it, talking about Steve Kern here. It, it, Steve Kern is somebody, I mean, you could learn from. Well, yeah. But, you know, I mean... But, but what grizzled mean? veteran. Well, yeah, but... Yeah. I, I have to say that, yeah, but I'm not a big Steve Kern fan. But uh, he debuts he debuts in pro wrestling um, in 1989. Yeah. Um, pretty much just jobbing in, like, uh, in Florida... Uh, a couple of shots in the NWA, uh, USWA, and also WCW. Yes. Which, uh, Tommy, you've seen him on some... Uh, yeah, on, uh, in, eight, in 1989, he was teaming with a, some guy named Rock Hard Rick. <laughs> Rock Hard Rick. I was like, really, that's the name? You could come up with any other name? You could call him Rick Grow or fucking... And that's, uh, and that's on uh, uh, Saturday Night, right? Yeah, yeah he, and they were taking on the Steiner Brothers. And the sad part, Mike oh, well. Awesome is the one who got pinned. Oh, when sense. it should have been Rock Hard Rick. <laughs> Rock um, pretty much just floated around different because you know at this time it was it, it was still technical technical uh, territories yeah. technically, um, but I uh, uh, did some jobs in Florida and NWA and uh, all sorts of that nature until uh, he finally gets a footing and debuts for FMW in 1990, uh, which if you guys don't know what FMW is, it is Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. Hardcore wrestling yeah. in Japan. Um, he be he debuts as the Gladiator, Mike Awesome. The Gladiator, and uh, with the face paint, with face paint, uh, and uh, uh, that's besides his sin in ECW. That's what I mainly yeah. remember him as is is a staple in FMW, um, and that that was in 1990. And pretty much, Tommy, this was his career in FMW. Uh, a one-time FMW World <coughs> Street Fight six-man tag team champion, uh, a two-time FMW World Brass Knuckles tag team champion, a two-time FMW World Brass Knuckles heavyweight champion, a one-time FMW Independent World heavyweight champion. Um, those are uh, no small uh, feats whatsoever. Yeah, because FMW is a tough promotion. Oh, yeah, and... Uh, uh, very tough promotion. Uh, very hard hitting and very uh, hardcore. Uh, if you guys don't know, FMW was owned by Onita. Yeah. And Onita was known to be a very brutal yes. uh, wrestler in his time, especially, uh, you know, when he was doing it in, the, in you know, like the 80s. Yeah. Um, and Onita's uh, a tough guy. <laughs> yes. And, uh, uh, of course, he brought this, you know, uh, th this style... Uh, that he's seen to Japan, and, and and it was a big hit. Yeah. Um, Tommy, let's talk about about a few of Gladiator Mike Awesome's feuds in FMW. Yes. Uh, what are some of the stands out a standout in your opinion? Masato Tanaka. Masato Tanaka, as you guys know, as as well as ECW. Yep. Um, they had a big feud in FMW as well. Yeah. Uh, they always had great matches too. Oh yeah, fantastic! And matches. probably another one is uh, Leatherface. Leatherface, which was uh, which is Corporal Kirshner. Yes, from the uh, from the nineteen eighties yes. in, in the WWF. And how stupid people thought he was dead. That's yeah. how stupid people are. Well, there you go. Uh, and by the way, I liked him as Leatherface. Oh yeah. Corporal Kirshner, not that much. 
But she didn't like him as super leather. And, oh, yeah. And, 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 when he and, had and the leather face and chasing the goddamn fans around with the goddamn uh, chainsaw? doll chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> and you see him run. Um, Tommy, what was that famous line that you remember oh. from? Uh, oh, the great promo. The great six-man tag that Horus, that Mike Awesome had to carry with uh, some other Japanese guy and Horace Hogan. You know he ain't going to do much. CPA? Yeah, CPA Boulder. <laughs> that, that he went yeah, by. Horace CPA Boulder. You know, and, uh, and so you know that. Mike Awesome's carrying the load here for that team. Uh, they're going to take on Super Leather and uh, the, the Headhunters. Head yeah, which was in the uh, Royal Rumble in 96. Yes. Yeah, just remember that. Yes. They were in, the Headhunters were in the Royal Rumble in 96. And I think it was on the King of the Death Match DVD. Yes, Check it, it out. One of the best Mike Awesome promos. Go ahead and give it to us. Oh, you're going to give it? Yes. I don't give a goddamn about no six-man street fight belt. But there is one thing I do care about, and that's you, Leatherface. I'm going to kick your ass all over that ring. I'm going to kick your ass outside of that ring. Yeah, I might kick your ass upstairs somewhere. And if those two Puerto Ricans get in my way, I'm going to knock their goddamn heads off. Classic promo. There's a lot of people I love to knock their goddamn <laughs> heads off. There, there, There's one that's no longer in Kentucky. <laughs> but uh, uh, fantastic uh, um, uh, feuds. Uh, his feud with... Uh, uh, over the independent championship with yeah. uh, with um, uh, uh, Hayabusa. Yes. Uh, they had some great matches. Uh, uh, him and Mr. Pogo. Uh, you can go Stuff over. you can't get away with 2019 with that promo by Mike Awesome. Uh, definitely on that. Because people get butt hurt nowadays. Now, Tommy, uh, uh, you know, he did stints in Japan, and he also wrestled in the States as yeah. well. Um you know, he briefly did some stints in uh, in ECW as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, this was in 93, 94, 97, and 98. Um, and then he actually leaves FMW completely in 1998. Um, and he debuts in uh, in uh, All Japan. But that was very brief. Yes. Uh, that was in 98 and 99. And uh, nothing really too special to talk about is his All Japan yeah. um, run. He was just there for a cup of coffee. He was there for a cup of coffee. Um, and that leads to 1999. In September of 1999, Tommy, he debuts, re-debuts, I yes. should say, uh, as a top guy, which I, I would probably I, I, I would say Mike Awesome's a top guy. At Should've this been. point. Yeah, at this, at this point. point. Especially in ECW. He debuts in ECW on September 1999. And, Tommy, this was kind of our height of fandom at this point. Yeah. Because in 1999, we were watching ECW yes. on a regular basis. Yes, we were. Right there on TNN. Right there on TNN. Of course, the only goddamn thing that TNN had high ratings damn sure wasn't Roller Jam or, yeah, well, that's or true. fucking Dukes of Hazard or <laughs> anything like that. It was goddamn fucking ECW that had the highest ratings. And, uh, and, and, and instantly, uh, when I felt, I mean, cause I mean, we did watch a few FMW shows yeah. and things of that nature, but you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, FMW wasn't as prominent in the States as it was in Japan. Yeah. So we were kind of limited, but when I, when I seen Mike Awesome in, in, in ECW, um, I was instantly a fan of his, yeah. uh, his intensity, his, uh. His, his look, his look, his uh, his style of wrestling. Yes, because uh, a big hitting. man don't do that. Exactly, stuff that Mike Awesome does. No doubt. Uh, no, no big man does that, dives. That that dives and and for his size, for very the only person I can think of that does dives besides Mike Awesome is you know Undertaker and and Kane. Yeah. Uh, who else is doing dives yeah. that are, are pretty big men that, that you don't really see that too often? Yeah. And uh, Tom, let's go over a little, a little uh, of his history in ECW. He's a one-time ECW Tag Team Champion, and he's a two-time ECW World Heavyweight Champion. Yes. Let's go over some of the feuds for his ECW career. Uh, right off the bat, Masato Tanaka. The, the most highest feud that he had. The oh, best yes. feud, actually. I enjoyed And that was the saving grace in 2000, ECW. Oh, yes. Yes. Let me tell you. Cause Late I, 99 and 2000. Those are that was saving the saving graces. grace of uh, ECW. Uh, go back and watch some of their matches. They beat the dog yeah. shit out of each other. They beat the hell out of each other, and they always put on great matches. Go watch any of their matches. I I, I dare say any of their matches you cannot uh, get a stinker out of. Yeah. So go watch any of their matches, even their matches in, in FMW. Go watch yeah. them, because you will see uh, that they didn't really want to disappoint anybody, that they were there to... 
beat the shit out of each other. Um, who else, Tommy? Well, Spike Dudley. <laughs> what, what was one of your favorites uh, <laughs> that he did? Oh, Spike oh. Dudley. Uh, oh, that, that, that was a good feud, that. okay? Yeah. Because he, he, you got little Spike Dudley and you got big Mike Awesome. Yeah. And my favorite is when Mike would, when Spike Dudley's little girlfriend came in. Yeah. And he, she does the Dudley dog to Jeff, Jeff, Judge Jeff Jones, who sucks. Yeah. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, and then Mike Awesome just fucking clotheslines the shit out of her. And she falls. And, and, she, and, and she's bleeding from the mouth. And you see Spike, oh God. Oh God, she's bleeding and all this. And then fucking, they go to fucking Mike Awesome with a goddamn promo and goes, yeah. Yeah, I knocked your girlfriend's teeth down her fucking throat. <laughs> which, uh, <laughs> which I thought is what ECW needed was yeah. was, was was a big guy that could that could do. Yeah, the sort like of he, that he, he was, was really fucking great. Like Mike Awesome in ECW was dominating. But unfortunately, you and know, then and like he won the ECW championship at Anarchy Rules. Yes, he uh, beat Taz. Yeah, beat Taz. You and, know, and, uh, and, and, and Masato Tanaka. And Masato Tanaka. That's Tanaka. when Taz went to WWF. Yeah. And became a sawed off orange midget, right? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. WWF wasn't that stuff. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but Mike Awesome. I enjoyed him as ECW champion. Fantastic, but Tommy, it leads to seven months later. Yeah, seven months later in April of 2000, Tommy. Um, Pretty much, uh, he shows up in WCW. Yeah. As the ECW champion. Yes, now, as the ECW world champion. Yes. Because of a contract yes. dispute. He he comes, and I think he, I think it was Nash. He was limping on a goddamn crutch. I didn't give a fuck about Nash. Yeah. And the only thing I enjoyed <laughs> was when Mike Austin beat the shit out of Nash. And then after that, I changed Nitro. Yeah, no doubt. And, uh, and Mike Austin made a big debut. Come on, he took out Kevin Nash. Oh, yeah. That's a big. That's a big statement there. Big statement, big impact. But did they capitalize on it? No, of course not. No. That's WCW for you. The bird. They don't do much of anything. <laughs> um, now, of course, uh, you know he's ECW champion, but he actually signs a contract with WCW yes. World Championship Wrestling, and uh, well, he's still the ECW champion. He has to do something. So. What they did, Tommy, and this is the first time that they've yes. ever done something like this. First time ever. Um, in May of 2000, there was a, a pretty much a live ECW event where um, Mike Awesome came as a contracted WCW performer, yes. comes to a official ECW show to take on a WWF <laughs> superstar for the ECW championship when you see Mike Awesome take on Taz. Yes. And uh, 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 there was security that had to let him in because of uh, uh, people in the ECW uh, was going to probably jump him. Or yeah, whatever. that's what that's what a lot of people thought. But a lot of people said they loved Mike Austin. Yeah, uh, in, in the locker room. So uh, pretty much, he comes in and there. Come on, like he he's not making much in ECW. Uh, yeah, I mean, who wouldn't sign a fucking contract exactly. with I the mean, WWF for a I mean, WCW? People are sitting there like, "Oh, you sold out, motherfucker!" Well, well I mean, if, I'm, I if my money. check is bouncing every fucking week and not getting my money, I'm signing with a new person you know, so I can get paid. You got to realize people have families, you yeah, know, things of that nature. You got you got to take care of you. You know, you, you got to take, take care, care of, of you. Your, yeah, you got to take care of you and your family. It's not always about your professional yeah. uh, career. Um, which uh, he goes and he loses to Taz in a quickie. In a quickie, uh, yeah, so he so Taz gets out of there. Taz <laughs> and he taps out. He crawls over the uh, barricade and <laughs> heads leaves. to Atlanta. Yeah, heads to Atlanta, Atlanta, uh, Georgia. <laughs> in Atlanta, Georgia. And then Tommy, let's talk about some of these horrible gimmicks. Anyway. All right. <laughs> uh, first thing he gets right, he gets right off the bat. Tommy, um, is the fat chick thriller. What do you think about this gimmick? They bring Mike Awesome in. Yes. They bring him in from ECW. And these dumb motherfuckers. I bet you it was Russo. Oh, well, I, I bet you it was Russo and fucking Fat Fuck Ferrara, Duck Man Lover. Yep. Fucking go. We need we need uh, someone that loves fat chicks. <laughs> fuck it. Let's use Mike Awesome. We just brought him in. He's a monster, but fuck it. We can, we can call him the Fat Chick Thriller. It was fucking a whor- bunch of fucking horse shit. Yeah. Like, you're making him like a fucking... Like, fat chubby like, chaser. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, nothing gets fat women. Yeah. But, uh, like, it's just... It is what it is. It is what it is. It's bullshit. Like, you do this with fucking Mike Awesome, give me a fucking break. Well, Tommy, then in, then in September of 2000, he becomes 
they got to change the gimmick again because oh, the tactic yeah. thriller wasn't getting over. Well, well, who's that? Whose fault's that? So in September, that's WCW's fault, not Mike Awesome's fault. In September of two thousand, he becomes because Tommy around this time there oh, was yeah. a big popular show called That Seventy Show. Yeah, that Seventy Show, which yeah. I loved. I watched it when I yeah, was. I like that Seventy Show. But Tommy, they're like, oh, we're gonna capitalize on. Yeah, we're gonna capitalize on, it. <laughs> and he's gonna be that seventies guy. That seventies guy it, with the love lounge. <laughs> he looked like fucking Van Hammer. Peace, love, and war. <laughs> you remember Van Hammer almost had the same goddamn gimmick. Yes. That fucking Mike Awesome had. But Mike Awesome has talent. Van Hammer never did. Yes. So there's a big difference. But Mike Awesome being that 70s guy. Fuck, how about you give it to Van Hammer? You gave it to him before. Give it to him again. In his fucking peace, t- peace blue jeans. <laughs> in his goddamn insects. <clears throat> give, give it to fucking Van Hammer. But no, you don't want to make... You don't want Mike... You want Mike Awesome to look, look like, a, like a fucking idiot. Yeah. And fucking look like a goddamn fucking guy from the, from fucking seventies. It was horse shit. And then Tommy, the last gimmick he has, and this is in, in this is in January of two thousand one. So this is almost when WCW yeah. closes. He actually becomes my favorite gimmick out of everything they did yeah. in WCW. The Canadian career killer. Yeah. Mike Awesome. I they enjoyed, finally gave finally, him something to do. Finally, because I enjoyed him as Team jo- Canada. Yeah, he joins Team Canada with Lance Storm, yeah. Major Guns, uh, and you know, Elix Skipper, them. and Jim Duggan was there for some fucking reason, <laughs> milking money. Yeah, well, of course. Uh, um, and uh, and and this is where I enjoyed him the most. Yeah, like uh, I enjoyed, I enjoyed him with Team Canada. Like because this is the only time I enjoyed him in WCW. I wasn't a big fan of the fucking Fat Chick Thriller, and I wasn't a big fan of the fucking seventies guy. Okay. But then finally, when he was with Team Canada, I enjoyed that. Finally, he's got something good that yeah. I can actually enjoy. And uh, and well, you know, WCW gets bought out by the WWF in uh, March of uh, two thousand one, and uh, well, and then Tommy in June of two thousand one, um. We see uh, Mike Awesome debut. Yes. With, with the Alliance. With the Alliance. Uh, you know, as you guys know, the WWF bought out WCW. And, well, took them a few months to figure out what the hell well, they were going to do with did. WCW. Of course they did. That's that's uh, that, How the fuck stupid is that? Like, it took you that fucking long? And, and who the fuck did we get out of the Alliance? Who, DDP and Booker T? As big stars. As big stars. Like, uh, some of them were because at this point, Because at this point... They they devalued Mike Awesome pretty yeah pretty like there was a lot of guys in that alliance like I was like really mm-hmm. why the hell is Sean Stacy I got a job you know mm-hmm. there there was a lot of guys on on their fucking mm-hmm. alliance I was like why the fucker like so these these are the threat to the WDF guys so fucking Austin should be scared of Sean Stacy like 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 the Rock should be scared of fucking Hurricane Helms or or fucking sure all these shame. type you know what I'm trying <laughs> to say he, they should be scared of these type guys. The only ones I'd be scared of is like a Rhino and the Dudley Boys and fucking Booker T and fucking DDP. Now, Tommy, he debuts in the WWF on June of 2001. He actually beats Rhino. Yeah. And becomes the WWF Hardcore Champion. Yeah, and uh, I think he was the uh, first one out of the Alliance to win a title. Yes, for the, he uh, was. For the Alliance. He was. And pretty much that's the end of his WWF title reign. Well, of course it was. That's uh, the only. That's yeah, the only WWF title yeah, he held. Yeah, and he didn't, he didn't win hold, And he didn't hold the hardcore championship very long. Yeah, and and uh, 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 he didn't win one in WCW. No. Um, but um, Tommy, it was short lived. Well, of course it was. Uh, a few weeks later, he actually loses it to Jeff, Jeff Hardy. Oh yeah, of course. So uh, he only held the hardcore championship for a few weeks, and he gets injured in November of two thousand one. Uh, so he's out. Uh, he's out for uh, nine months because he comes back in uh, in July of two thousand two, and pretty much just just does some job matches. He's losing to a lot of the stars. Yeah, he's losing to fucking everybody. Yeah, uh, and on velocity, and mm-hmm. he's losing on every, He's losing to everybody. Are you serious? Mike Awesome can't beat fucking Funaki. <laughs> You know, I'm being honest. Indeed. No, I'm being honest here. No, no disrespect to Funaki. Yeah. You know, or, or he couldn't beat fucking a guy like Scotty Too Hotty, or he and, can't you know, beat these type guys. And, you know, this is, the, you know, this give is, me a fucking break. You know, this is only two years removed from when he was dominating in ECW. Yeah, like really, like he can't beat these type guys. But he gets released a month, well, two months later in September 
of 2002, he gets released from his. Well, I heard he enjoyed getting his release. Yeah, yeah, he didn't really enjoy his his, his time with the WWF. Well, hell, and, who blame him? And it was short lived. He was only there for a little over a year, uh, winning the, the Hardcore Championship. Yeah, I heard he hated it. And then from 2002 to 2006, he does a lot of independent uh, uh, bookings for yeah. uh, in, in in America and also yes. in Japan as yeah. well. Um, at this time, FMW has also folded. Yeah. It folded in 2001. Um, and uh, he does a lot of uh, tours in Japan uh, for independence as well as in, in America. And then he does a few uh, matches for TNA in 2003. Uh, just a couple of matches, a couple yeah. of shots for TNA. Um, until, Tommy, he comes back for ECW One Night Stand. Yeah. In 2005. Yeah. And he takes on his arch rival... In ECW, Masato Tanaka. And they had a fan. Yeah, that was a match. great fucking match, also. One Night Stand 2005, Mike Awesome versus Masato Tanaka. Great fucking match. And Mike Awesome looked in good shape here. He did. And so did Masato Tanaka. Fantastic. It looked like they never fucking missed a beat. And I don't think they did, because uh, uh, if you guys want to go back, uh, me and Tom actually yes. did a review. If you guys go, if you guys want to go watch in the archives, me and Tom actually did a review for ECW One Night Stand 2005 DVD review. If you guys want to go check that yeah. out, go check that out. Yeah, go check um, it out. And then uh, uh, Tommy Mike Awesome officially retires um, February of 2006. Uh, he actually retires after 17 years of pro wrestling. <clears throat> Pretty decent run. Yeah. If you ask, you know, uh, uh, you know, if you if you get around twenty years in in, in wrestling, I think you're doing damn yeah, good. Yeah, I do too. Um, uh, he actually retires and becomes a real estate agent in Tampa, Florida, and um, this is where uh, things go uh, go awry. Uh, a year later, in February of 2007, his friends find. Uh, Mike Awesome hanging inside of his Tampa home uh, by suicide, um, suicide hanging uh, inside his, his uh, Tampa home. Uh, he was 42 years old, uh, very young. Yeah, very young. Uh, very young. Uh, there's no reason anybody. Yeah. And also, guys, <clears throat> this is also a P, uh, 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 public service announcement. If there's anything in life that makes you think about suicide do not yeah there, do there's there's hotlines you can call get some help get some help you uh, know like you, there's no reason there's no reason to do that uh, especially at, at this point of 42 years old you still have a decent life left yeah. left to live yes yeah, so, so uh, don't do that and uh, uh, they see a in memory on ECW on sci-fi uh, you know the little yeah. picture and uh that's uh, that's pretty much uh, Mike Awesome's uh, life and career. Um, now let's talk about Tommy Mike Awesome's legacy in pro wrestling. What do you think his legacy is in pro wrestling? Well, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. Probably a lot of a lot of big men wanted to get in the business because of a Mike Awesome. I think so too. You know, they probably like the Japanese wrestlers. <clears throat> you know, like hey, I remember Mike Awesome, and he kind of. He kind of got me wanting to wrestle, mm -hmm. you know, especially a big guy. Or, yeah, I mean, I think some of his legacy would be as, you know, that strong big guy that wasn't like, you know, he wasn't like the the biggest guy, yeah. but he was he was one of those um, those uh, in between guys, you know, like, um, uh, you know, he's a big guy, yeah. but. You know, he's not on the on a par of like a giant Gonzalez. He's part of a like you know those people like Undertaker, yes, Kane, those big guys. But he's one of those guys that can fly. He's yes. one of those guys that can work. He's one of those guys that uh, that uh, can do pretty much anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, uh, fr from what I've seen yes. of, of, of his career, um, you tell him to fly off the rope, he can fly off the rope. You could tell him to. Do, uh, submissions, uh, if you want, yeah. if you want, and most of the time he was that brawler yes. type of performer. Uh, but you know that 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 comes from his level in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know he could dive like like Mike Awesome is very underrated. He don't get no very. respect that he deserves because because he done a lot of great things and 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 
And he should be proud of what he done in the wrestling business because he done a lot of good things. No doubt. Uh, m- most most of his titles uh, were in, in, in Japan, but uh, um, with me and Tommy, it resonated because we were watching ECW at that time when he was there, and uh, I was I was a big fan of Mike Austin yeah. at that point. Um, I was too. Like I and was, then, and I was then I was fan. disappointed what they did with him in WCW. Yeah, when he came <laughs> when. when when I saw him, I was like, man, in ECW, he's great. Once I saw him in WCW and all the shit they did, mm-hmm. he made me mad because he deserves better than that. Oh, yeah, he deserved way better than that. And I and I think that's probably what his legacy would be Yeah, is a guy that was a top guy but never really got the opportunity yeah, never to really be got, a top guy. Got, never really got the opportunity. The only time he had an opportunity was in Japan and ECW. Because uh, WWF certainly didn't do it. You no, know, WWF uh, misses the boat on anything. So there and, you go. And, and 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 WCW just fucking devalued him. Yeah, it just ruined his career with that um, with the fucking fat chick thriller and the goddamn that seventies guy. I'll give it to Van Hammer. <laughs> but uh, I think that's what his legacy will be. Is is one of those big men that yes. uh, could have been a top guy but never got the yeah, opportunity. Yeah, ne- never really had a chance to fucking show people that he can work and fuck if you watched it. ECW and FMW would know that, mm-hmm. but like if no one watched that, we're like, oh. exactly. We'll see the major platforms that he was on, like yeah. WCW and WWF. They're like, oh, this guy's a jobber. Yeah, you know, this no, guy sucks. Not. No, he's not. But you know, that's you know, that's the thing about bigger platforms because people didn't watch ECW. Yes. Some people didn't watch FMW, so so they wouldn't know. Yeah. Um, but I think I think that's what it's like. Yeah. Would be. Yes. He he just don't get the credit he deserves. Um, anything else you want to add to this? No, no. Like, like, like I said, I think Mike Awesome's a very underrated big man, and just don't get the respect he deserves. But. Agreed. So, hope that you guys enjoyed the life and career of Mike Awesome. If you guys did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it all over social media. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash wrestling rampage two. Follow us on Twitter at wrestle rampage. And guys, if you guys enjoy more of yes. these in-depth wrestler profiles that we do let us know yeah let us know we'll do more we will do more um just let us know because i mean you know this 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 did take a little time to prep yes um uh because we want to make sure our research was right on all this stuff and uh, uh if you guys enjoy some more of this stuff let us know uh we would be yes, glad to do that yeah we'll be glad uh, to do some more of these yeah so uh, if you guys enjoyed it make sure you guys do all that good stuff and make sure you guys hit that subscribe button uh, for more great videos coming to you guys, because we are that cream that rises to the top. The cream of the crop, and nobody does it better. <laughs>